This is Clover Kit. He might look familiar to many internet veterans, especially those who were around the internet in 2015. You've probably seen him, or some variation of him, somewhere on the internet. Though his name has become nothing more than a joke in passing, this simple drawing started a movement, one full of lies, betrayal, and the terrible downfall of a young creator. This is the story of Clover Kit. At some point in your life, you've probably created your own character for a show, game, or a book you're interested in. These characters are called original characters, or more commonly referred to as OCs. This is where Clover Kit started, as someone's original character based off the Warrior Cats books. Clover Kit is nothing out of the ordinary for a Warrior Cats original character. That is, until you get to their appearance. Needless to say, a bright green cat is not something you'd see in nature, or even in the books the character is based off of. And even though the cat's color isn't natural, the OC wasn't anything special. Brightly colored OCs, known as sparkle cats, are super common in the Warrior Cats fandom, especially during the early stages. In fact, compared to the thousands of OCs floating around the internet, Clover Kit was just another face among many. And for a while, he was. Clover Kit didn't stand out until a Tumblr blog, under the name of Horrible DeviantArt Drawings, reposted a picture of Clover Kit. The caption mocked the colors the original artist chose for their OC. Despite the fact the internet was beginning its obsession with cringe culture, a Tumblr user saw an issue with the post and jumped to the defense of the original artist. Many others jumped in, criticizing Horrible DeviantArt Drawings for making fun of a young artist and their work. Another user suggested drawing Clover Kit as a way to encourage the young artist and spread some positivity. More people started to catch word of this and decided to jump on the bandwagon, encouraging others to join in. One more user suggested a name for the tag, and the official name of Project Clover Kit was given. Now that the project had a name, Tumblr users followed up on their word and started to draw Clover Kit. Tons of art started to flood Tumblr, each with the tag Clover Kit Project, which helped spread the word and encouraged more people to contribute. The tag and project name worked, as more people now wanted to draw Clover Kit to support the cause. A blog was even created about Project Clover Kit, with the attempt of continuing to do this with other young artists. However, the message of Project Clover Kit was a bit shaky, as it wasn't clear what the real purpose of it was. And while drawing the younger artist's character was certainly a welcome gift, things quickly got out of hand. The user's DeviantArt page was found soon after the post took off, and Bolt the Shiny Eevee became the center of attention for the Clover Kit project. Soon enough, their page was flooded with comments and likes on their works. Bolt appreciated all the kind comments, artwork, and attention the art was getting, and posted a journal thanking everyone for the support. But it was all too much at once, and soon Bolt was also sent a lot of hate for the project, despite having little to nothing to do with it. Bolt's comment section for the profile, as well as their original drawing, was filled with people arguing about Project Clover Kit. And while there were some kind comments, a majority of the comments were negative. Almost every comment was arguing about Project Clover Kit and how they didn't agree with what people were doing, or arguing about other people arguing. Yeah, the comment section was a mess to say the least. And since it was on Bolt's page, she would get every comment in her inbox and likely saw all the fighting. And one thing I feel as though people forgot is that Bolt was a child. Clearly by the art and the way Bolt acted, you could tell they were young. And yet people were still flooding their comments about how their art was terrible and how they didn't deserve the attention they were getting. And all of these comments likely hurt more than just the one initial post on Tumblr they might not have even known about. Clearly all this attention wasn't what Bolt wanted as she asked people to stop drawing Clover Kit and stop all the drama. But the news didn't go very far and users continued to post about Clover Kit. Eventually, Bolt had enough, and their final journal entry told everyone that this was too much for them, and deactivated their account. What had once started as a good intention project quickly turned sour, and left a young artist with a broken heart and a hatred for art, effectively doing the exact opposite of what they wanted to achieve. The blog I had mentioned earlier, Team Clover Kit, was focused on the Clover Kit project. The blog played an important part in the spread of the project, as they almost became the hub for where people would go to ask questions about the project and encouraged other people to join in. And despite having the intentions of supporting young artists, it only focused on Clover Kit art, and even went as far to use Clover Kit itself as their mascot. However, after Bolt's deactivation, they quickly tried to rebrand their blog, but ultimately ended up abandoning the project. 
Bolt's deactivation led many users to question the motives of the project. The initial thought of supporting young artists across the web was largely ignored to support just the one, and a little too much. The overwhelming support, if you could call it that, seemed to cause more harm than good. Many Tumblr users took Bolt's decision to leave DeviantArt as a chance to point out a very glaring issue. Was Project Cloverkit really the right thing to do? Even if we choose to ignore the mean comments the artist had received from this project, is constantly bombarding a young artist with compliments and praise a good thing? There were two main arguments for what the best route would have been, with both sides standing strong for their ideals. One group argued that being constantly bombarded with praise doesn't help an artist grow. Artists, especially young ones, should be given encouragement to continue to create art in any medium they would like, but without getting any constructive criticism, they will never improve. To blindly praise them for their works when they're objectively not that great isn't the way to go. But that doesn't mean you should go around harshly critiquing an artist's work, but rather give some helpful advice to make a bigger impact on their works. On the other hand, many users thought that critiques weren't the right thing to do either. Some users argued that if an artist wanted to be critiqued, they would outright ask for one. Younger artists are more impacted by what you say, so giving them critiques could be taken the wrong way. Simply critiquing someone's art all the time will make them lose interest in creating, as they might feel like they're not good enough to continue. Or they'll become even more self-conscious about their works and won't want to share them with others. Personally, I can see both sides to the argument, but surely there's a way to meet in the middle. You can support artists and compliment their works while also giving them some valid critiques or tips. It's finding the middle ground that will encourage someone to express themselves through art while also putting in the work to improve their skills. Regardless as to where you stand on the subject, the story of Cloverkit is a tragic one. To watch a young artist lose their inspiration to create is truly heartbreaking, and for all the drama it caused, the Cloverkit project was a complete failure. What started out as a kind gesture quickly turned artists against each other, and ultimately ended in a worse place than it started. But hold on, that's not all there is to the story. At the height of Cloverkit's popularity, this large detail slipped through the cracks. Looking at the infamous Cloverkit drawing, you'll notice two different versions of Cloverkit. One which looks to be drawn by Bolt, and another in the very top left corner. If you take a closer look, the art in the corner isn't Bolt style at all, but many DeviantArt veterans may recognize the art. It was one of the most well-known cat adoptable vases at the time. A quick explanation for adoptables for those who might not know, it's when an artist makes designs off characters, sometimes animals, costumes, or an entirely new species, and sell them. Basically, if it exists, there's an adoptable of it. I don't know too much about the adoptable scene today, but I'm fairly certain it's still alive and thriving, especially on DeviantArt. Many people create these batches of adoptables and sell them for a few points. Points being DeviantArt's currency, each point being around a cent USD. I know I was personally always on the grind, making as many of these as possible only to get around 30 points max, which doesn't seem like a lot, but trust me, when you're 11, you feel like a millionaire. This small detail is important as many months after the Cloverkit drama died down, someone found the original adoptable sheet Cloverkit debuted on. Normally this really wouldn't be an issue except the fact that the cat was sold to someone other than Bolt. It was sold to Slendy Adopts 10,012 for 5 points. I explored Slendy Adopts profile and I couldn't find anything about Bolt or any of the comments where Bolt asked to buy number 13 from them, so it's safe to say Cloverkit was stolen. I could jump to Bolt's defense and say that she didn't know what an adoptable was, but that would be a lie. <laughs> On her page, she had adoptables for sale. She was in adoptable groups. She just willingly stole Cloverkit. She even left the original art on the screen, so someone could easily track it down. The original buyer of Cloverkit didn't even know about the project. They continued to use Cloverkit in their works without even realizing. And it wasn't until someone offered to buy Cloverkit from Slendy did they find out. Thankfully, the rightful owner of Cloverkit, whose name was actually Clubs, wasn't mad about the incident. If anything, they were just shocked by this revelation. Clubs was then sold to another owner, who renamed them back to Clover. I know, confusing stuff. A few months later, the new owner of Clover came forward and decided to sell Cloverkit once again, as they hadn't grown attached to the character and thought they could go to a better home. Clover was sold for about $6.75. Later down the line, Clover was sold once again for $6 and ended up in the hands of Gay J Feather, also known as Gay Feather Star on Twitter. 
It's safe to say that Clover Kit is in good hands, as Gay Feather is now taking good care of him. I can see they draw Clover Kit fairly often and have other cute Clover Kit posts like Cookie Clover Kit and a page in the clan zine about Clover Kit. As of late 2022, they've even made a full fursuit of Clover Kit. It's crazy to see how far this little kitty has come, and I'm glad that Clover Kit has finally found their forever home. As for Bolt, it's still unknown where they are today. They never resurfaced after the Clover Kit incident, at least not under that name. It's sad to see such a young creator scared off a platform, especially for something that they really had no say in. It was by chance that this one Tumblr post had garnered so much attention, and it's rather unfortunate it ended the way it did. Looking through Bolt's old account, I get kind of sad. I know, maybe it sounds silly, but seeing the adoptables they had listed, the groups they made, and the journals they posted, I almost kind of wish the whole Clover Kit incident didn't happen. Bolt clearly had a love for art, and many online fandoms. And seeing this account sit here, a relic of the past, feels wrong. I hope that Bolt, wherever they are today, have been able to move past this incident and continue their artistic journey, unassociated with Clover Kit. I honestly really love Clover Kit and their journey, and I hope that this video did some justice for unveiling the lore, I guess, behind them. If I missed anything, let me know in the comments. And if you have any stories about the project or your involvement in the project, let me know as well. If you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing and checking out my other videos. I'd really appreciate it. As always, thank you guys for watching, and have a good one.